Hello and welcome to the Growing Healthy Families podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Scott Haggerty. On this show, I interview the world's top health experts so that you can know with certainty what it takes to give your family a life of epic health and wellness. As parents, we don't want to see our kids struggle. I knew that he had the potential. I knew that something needed to be done. It was hard. We would get frustrated. We didn't know how to, how to deal with it. I was more e- emotional about it. Sure that, you know, we're, we're here. Amen to that, brother. Amen to that. This is Dr. Scott Haggerty here with the Growing Healthy Families podcast. And today you are in for a treat. This handsome young man over here, this is Dr. David Fletcher. And um, I could go on and on, but one of the reasons I wanted to bring him on here today is because he's really a pioneer and a leader in the field of chiropractic. Um, and he he is the, uh, the, the CEO and owner, owner of a company that's called the Chiropractic Leadership Alliance. And, um, and from, from my perspective, we use the technology that he has developed that has allowed us to have a window into children's and families' nervous systems that we've never had before. And so, Dr. Fletcher, first and foremost, thank you for the work that you're doing for, for the docs out here in the field because the benefits to us in our ability to go and serve our patients are tremendous because of the technology that you work with. Well, it's, uh, it's honestly a great pleasure to have a chance to speak with you, Scott. Um, you and I have known each other through different seminars, through different, uh, you know, uh, co- uh, conventions and or, or sessions that we've been together at. And uh, I know that your passion is in line with my passion, which is to really get the message out about the ability that families have to lead healthier and more productive lives if they just understood how to look deeper and make better decisions into what is interfering with the expression of their of their sort of inborn greatness of of being healthy all the time and being clear in their thinking. So isn't that really the chiropractic story that we live through? It really is. It really is. And it's, you know, one of the reasons, moms and dads, that I brought Dr. Fletcher on here is because I have I've been around some people that I, I consider to, to be good communicators of the message. And I've never met anyone who can convey the the what what the value of what chiropractic is better than Dr. Fletcher. And um you know, Dr. Fletcher, there was one of your, he, he's also a, a podcaster as well. And uh, one of your podcasts where you talked about salutogenesis really resonated with me, which is what inspired me to to get this uh, this conversation going, because I thought, you know, I shared actually that podcast with a lot of my patients. And I, you know, I said, listen, there's some technical stuff in there that that's doc geared. But when they heard the message, they came back and they're like, I get it at a level that I've never gotten it before of the way that we're built to be to work and be healthy and how our, our brain and our nervous system and the body and everything integrates together. Um, so, you know, from that perspective, that's gonna be a lot of our focus in, in the conversation today um, as we move forward. But, but first, Dr. Fletcher, I'd love for you to go and just tell people about yourself, um, about where you're from and that amazing accent that you have. And <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> well, you know, I think, that, I think that I'd always love to start on a podcast or in any interview by telling everybody that I'm a chiropractor. Um, you know, my passion uh, in my early days in academia and otherwise was to align myself with these principles that drive chiropractic. Um, chiropractic is not a subset of medicine, which is one of the reasons I chose it outside of my decision to be a chiropractor. It was really to associate with this with this ability to uh, harness or access the, the joy in, in day-to-day family practice of allowing families to really see this, uh, this greatness that they can deliver if they just had the tools of, of operating through a more functioning nervous system. Mm-hmm. So uh, I guess in the background that I would say is that, um, you know, in my early days, without going through this too much, I come from a math background. And that sort of seems like an odd place to begin a health-based career. But actually, it isn't because uh, mathematics is based on logic and health is based on logic, too. And so it becomes very logical. I know that most people walk around. I mean, if you were to if you were to watch commercials on TV, you'd be led down this path to believe that, you know, health is some mystery that only a drug can fix. And so the truth of it is, is that that's not where health comes from. Health comes from a very logical approach that says that all the systems of the body are talking and coordinated through the ability of the nervous system to express itself fully. And the complexities of the nervous system are so great that I, in my next level of, of decision making in my academia, decided to do some some 
developed research. And so I took on performance-based research and uh, developed a, a fellowship in sports sciences. Now, that wasn't so we could look at you know injured knees. It was to look at the optimizing performance in these really elite athletes. So, so I've worked tremendously with uh, Olympians, with professional athletes, but mostly I spent my life working in family practice. And that's where the joy of working day to day with families was. I'm from Toronto, which is that lovely accent that you talk about. Um, and so it's a big city and it's, it's, it's got a lot of interactions with, as I said, all these different, these different facilities, both in research and in, in universities and, and in other sides. So I've really dipped my, my toe into many of them. And along this path, one of the things that I really fell in love with was the evidence based approach of looking deeper into the functioning nervous system. So the company that you recognized at the, at the start of this, which is called the Chiropractic Leadership Alliance, was based on the premise of using evidence-based technologies to identify where really harmful patterns of stress, which we in chiropractic refer to as subluxations, have started to embed themselves deeply within both the spine and the functioning nervous system. And so the technologies that we'll probably end up talking a little bit about today really are designed specifically for chiropractors to build a picture and a tracking mechanism to see how the stress person's life as it relates to their functioning nervous system. That whole story that we talked about or that you and I talked about endlessly, but you've introduced to some of your folks, which is called salutogenesis. So, and, and, you know, Dr. Dr. Fletcher, you know, obviously you've, you've gone down your path and you've, you've made a big transition in your career out of family practice to be someone who really is, is one of the most well-known leaders worldwide in the profession. Um, would, would you tell everybody a little bit about how you got to the point where you made the transition from being a practicing chiropractor day to day out into becoming now the CEO and owner of CLA? Sure. Um, actually, during that course of my uh, of my uh, research based academia, I started using a technology known as surface electromyography. And this goes back about 20 years. And in that time, we were doing some really detailed work with looking at everything from postures to movements and otherwise. And as I was looking for better technology to work with, I, can't, I stumbled across these two pioneers that actually were chiropractors. And so I struck up a friendship with, with two amazing doctors, uh, Dr. Jen Tempo and Dr. Kent, who for 20 years, we started to develop clinical protocols. They had developed the, the foundation for the Chiropractic Leadership Alliance. And when it was time for me to take the reins of it, which was seven years ago, um, they handed it off to me and I took over from an ownership perspective as also from a research perspective. And it was at that time, it's a pretty big company. We, we service chiropractors in 40 different countries. I tried to juggle both because I, I, I adore day-to-day -day practice. Um, but it got to the point about three years ago that I thought, you know what, I'm going to have to invest my time in building my relationship with the company. And it was with really some, some sad moments that I left this really dynamic practice, which is very similar to, I imagine, you know, the ones that are, are you know, the families go to that are, will be listening to this. Um, but I handed it off to some great chiropractors and they've been doing a great job in my community. And this way, I get to speak to thousands of chiropractors about chiropractic, but on a different stage. That's tremendous. So, you know, obviously, as you'd mentioned before, we, we've known each other from a number of different settings. Um, workshops and seminars and things along that lines. Um, and, you know, you, we've come to work obviously quite closely together because of our, our connection through the National Wellness Foundation and the doctors of Epic Pediatrics. Um, so could you expand a little bit about how there was, um, there was the, the really, I mean, the amazing relationship that was built between, you know, the, the, the Epic Pediatrics doctors and CLA? Oh yeah, that was easy. So, um, you know, one of the, one of the, the, great joys of working with the National Wellness Foundation as well as with Epic Pediatrics is that, uh, you know, that that grouping attracts some some incredible doctors, doctors that who have really dedicated themselves to not only having a conversation of the traditional, well, I wouldn't say traditional, the more common form of chiropractic, which is sort of, you know, spine based care based towards the, the structure, but really looking at what I was aligned with, which was this this functional outcome. And so, um, the National Wellness Foundation and Epic Pediatrics embraced the technologies that we had so that there was this ability to really grow uh, an evidence-based, evidence-informed uh, outlook 
when you're working with families. Um, I mean, that that was almost like this hand in glove relationship of where if families were going to be be scanned, as we call it, and we were going to work with an organization that had a broad reach, such as Epic Pediatrics and otherwise, um, it, it offered me the opportunity to teach at a new level to really inspire doctors. And at the same time, it allowed me to, uh, pardon me, allowed Epic Pediatrics and the leaders there, Dr. David Jackson and Dr. Uh, Tony Ebel, to really nail down a next level of interpretation, a next level of integration. And actually, as we have continued to develop our, our uh, research-based, uh, you know, softwares and things of that nature, we've really leaned on the data that's coming from the Epic Pediatrics crowd because it's so rich and so um, uh, solid when it comes to looking at where this next iteration of, uh, of, of stories and of research is going with family-based and pediatric care. You know, I was actually just sharing this story with a, with a family last night. We did a, a workshop, a perfect storm workshop um, oh, yeah. here in town. And I was actually just sharing a story about kind of how, how we became introduced to the software. And um, so, you know, my, my backstory is my, my little girl was the reason that we actually became a part of the NBF. She was having some, some pretty significant struggles, emotional dysregulation issues. And as, as Cairo dad, right, Cairo dad who wants to be able to help my child, um, who also, you know, I'm, I'm, a hair away from a diplomate in neurology and I've got all this training and a master's in sports science and rehab, all this stuff. And I didn't know how to help my little girl. And, you know, as, as a dad, you can imagine the frustration that that brought with it. And then I was, uh, I was sharing with the folks that I was talking to last night that it was actually very interesting when we bought, when we bought our sub subluxation station, when I, I got my first scan of my daughter, I was mad because my little girl was never receiving the level of care that she actually should have received, right? And so, you know, there was, it was a great deal of frustration in the very beginning, but then, you know, when I, when I really kind of put everything into context, what I felt after that was empowered. Because yes. now, you know, not only did it change the way that I cared for my daughter, it helped me to understand that the level of care that my wife needed, and then the patients in my community needed, because it gave me a window to actually understand what was happening with them <clears throat> that there'd never been before. And so from, from the perspective of being able to actually serve at a higher level, it enabled us to be able to take our care from, from one level and not just one exit, 10 exit, because we were able to, for the first time, really understand from a very functional, very evidence-based, very, very analytical perspective, what was happening inside of every child's and every adult's nervous system that we looked at and then as, a, as the, the tangible benefit from that, when we care plan better, we got better results. And that was amazing. Exactly. And, you know, I, I think one of, the, one of the dictums, if you would, that comes out of epipediatrics, which is, again, based on exactly what you said there, Scott, is scans dictate plans. Mm -hmm. And it gives you the confidence to know that you're on the right path. And it also gives you the opportunity to make some you know, some, some detailed detours, if you would, to say, you know, I'm not getting the job done. Maybe I need to take a look in this direction or this direction. And, you know, I think that that really opens the door for this, this sort of second level conversation, which you actually began in our, in our interview today, which is this principle of salutogenesis. Mm -hmm. Because, and I think it's really, it's an important word for families to understand because it's a very empowering word. It, and and the, the opposite of salutogenesis is the way that medicine was set up. And medicine has set up to develop what is called pathogenesis. In other words, to genesis meaning the start of, is that medicine's focus is to try and look and say, where did disease begin? Whereas chiropractic and the model of salutogenesis is where does health begin? And it's really two different, you know, it's, it's, it's two different approaches. But when you really think about it, Pathogenesis is the result of a lack of salutogenesis, you know. And so if you take a look at the origins of the term salutogenesis, it really means the genesis of health. And it was coined by this really amazing researcher who was actually in, in what was called psychoneuroimmunology. And this, this is one of the, the leaders of, of this movement, very brilliant man called Antonovsky. And it was as early as 1978 that he came up with this terminology. And he didn't do it to try and be antagonistic to medicine. In fact, he worked in very, very deep medical research. 
But his role was to say, wait a minute, this path that we're taking, which is really to try and find out, you know, why the germ theory is always working, is really not about the, you know, and this is, goes way back to Pasteur, who was developing of the germ theory, he always said, wait a minute, it's not the, it's not the seed, it's the soil. Meaning, if we can take a look and say, where is this lack of the genesis of health? And he then said something that was so important, Scott. He said, salutogenesis is based upon the stress-based resources that the human has. And, and, and what he's really talking about there is how much adaptive reserve does that human being have? And if we take a look at the adaptive reserve, it's massive. Like, you know, we can sustain enormous changes within our health and, and we're supposed to, we're supposed to take on life. You know, we're not supposed to hide from it. We're supposed to push ourselves to our limits all the time. But at the same time, we're supposed to be able to recover. And if you take a look at what stress-based resources mean, they're not saying be careful. They're saying exactly the opposite is embrace and empower your natural ability to recover. And when we take a look, and you're in the diplomates of neurology and, and, and family-based care as I was, the association of the recovering human being, whether it's from birth or whether it's at the end of life cycle, is, dom is, is under the guidance and is dominated by how balanced and how fully charged your operating nervous system is. And it's for those reasons, you know, take chiropractic out of this and let's just talk about being responsible. A responsible person understands that there is a brain to body connection that occurs in this corridor of communication called the spinal cord. And you know, clear and active communication going from brain to body, body to brain through this corridor, there is the chance that this salutogenic stress resources can be interfered with. And that is the premise that has always been under the chiropractic model is it says, we don't have the answers for what pathogenesis is about. We don't treat the disease. Before we ask about disease, let's ask about communication in this neural, what we call dural core, and let's take a picture of it and then find ways to release it without the use of drugs. To me, and I go back to that story about mathematics and otherwise, to me, Scott, that's the most logical approach. Mm -hmm. To me, that just makes darn sense. It doesn't dismiss medicine. It just says, let's begin at a different starting point. Let's take a look and embrace the idea that humans were built to sustain and, and, and grow under a stress-based load. Let's go and find out how they're not recovering from it. And let's look at those existing patterns, put a name to it, call it subluxation, call it Fred. I don't really care. But, you know, let's, let's have an identifiable model and let's be responsible to say, are we doing the job of unlocking those stress-based patterns? And what can we do to embrace them to build up that recovery model? I don't know. It seems pretty logical to me. It is. And I love the way you describe that because the concept of salutogenesis is I think that a lot of people innately, I think they get it at a very primal level. But I think a lot of what we see is, is only the, the, the pathogenesis side. Yeah. And, you know, so so moms and dads, when you're watching this, I want you to take that to heart, because what, what Dr. Fletcher described there is really, you know, what we all strive for. Right. It's the ability to go and maintain optimal health. But we've not been taught how to do that. Right. And so when we're not empowered to do that, it makes it very difficult to understand what's necessary for us to maintain health. And in the conversation about the, the you know, the, the 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 communication is a huge one because. You know, as early as little kids, infants, toddlers, we're seeing really significantly reduced stress reserves that is causing then output problems, right? What we oftentimes will call behavioral problems or immune challenges because the reserves at oftentimes very early stages are completely tapped out. Wouldn't you agree? Well, I agree completely. You know, it's interesting uh, and, and just stepping back for one moment, but then moving forward is that. When we talk logically like this, we, we, we are attracting conversations with some of the leading researchers in the world associated with this adaptive response. And they get chiropractic at that level. The complicated part of chiropractic is that many chiropractors on the street 
are not taking the message deeply and far enough about this whole idea of salutogenesis. And so there's a confusing message that's out in the public eye. The chiropractic is really based upon this back pain, neck pain model, which right. confuses it with physiotherapy and the outcomes that are there. And listen, when you have a when you have a communication breakdown and it associates in the spinal core, the muscles are going to react, the joints are going to lock up, and you're going to get a back problem somewhere along the line. So I do understand this idea behind the, you know, behind using chiropractic to manage to the back pain level. But that's like dipping your toe in a racing river. The reality is, is that there's so much more to engage. And so we've developed these tools that are that are really just, you know, verified and qualified medical instruments, instruments that are used and, and, and validated through so many different medical models. For instance, heart rate variability, you use the term adaptive reserve. The beating heart is controlled through this communication from brain to body. And the beating heart is a wonderful, simple way to assess how well balanced that functioning nervous system is. And so we developed a technology that allows us to, to take a look at the beating heart, do significant calculations, that's my math background, but 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 we we didn't simply do this. This has been verified through you know through every format, whether it's in in cardiology or whether it's in sports and performance or psychology. They all use heart rate variability. Our application of it in a chiropractic setting is really to look at, and I'll use this term, the bounce back factor. In other words, how quickly can a person bounce back from an added stress? And to do that, you have to know what they're working with as far as the amount of reserve they have. Well, we can literally plot on a graph that, that you know, you use in your practice and I developed, which is this, we refer to it as a rainbow graph just because it's got a bunch of colors on it. But we know from our research how a well-adjusted nervous system should respond. We know how much charge, if you signal that run that heart through the nervous system balance between the recovery based and the stress based parts of the nervous system should be working out. And as a result of that, we now can offer you as a chiropractor these ranges to test everyone from a newborn to an end of life cycle person. And the joy of being able to do that is exactly what you said about your daughter, Scott. And that is, is that with best intentions, you were caring for her and you were having her cared for and everybody else. But when we looked deeper and we saw that there was still more we could do or a different path that we could follow, whether it be more frequent adjustments or a different approach to adjusting or this ability we have to add other strategies into the mix, it doesn't matter because you're the doctor, you can coordinate that. The reality is, is that you had a map of her ability to take on new strategies mm -hmm. and whether she was integrating them or not. And that's the joy I have. And, you know, wrapping it full circle is that I don't feel I've left family practice. I feel I've entered into this enormous practice of where I get to interact with your practice and thousands of other doctors' practices. So, you know, I, at least that's how I justify leaving my hand on the patients at this moment. <laughs> Well, you know, it's funny because I, I, I love this conversation about that that window in because, you know, when when we when we, you know, I, obviously when, when we operate in a day to day practice, one of my my biggest things is, we, you know, we're so we're so focused on helping to make sure that we get a really positive result with our patients. Right. And it's, it's that window in that allows us to be able to do that. And, you know, oftentimes, like even I, I, before I, I got on the podcast, I, I'd done a couple of um, what we call doctor's reports, report of findings this morning. And, you know, the conversation really revolves around giving moms and dads an understanding and a certainty that as we begin the care process, we have we have the ability to go and measure change through through really three windows. Right. Because each one of the technologies is, is a window to understand. And, I, you know, oftentimes what I'll do is I'll explain to, to moms and dads about the HRV is it's our long-term adaptive window. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the lifetime before the moment of the first scan, we've been able to go and analyze and assess what that child's reserves are like or that adult's reserves are like, how they've adapted, have they gotten stuck, are they stuck in one side dominance, right? Sympathetic fight or flight or rest and digest instead of being in balance, be able to go and convey that back to mom and dad as a tracking point. 
Because when they look at it and they see, well, boy, my child doesn't have any reserves and they're stuck in a dominance. And then as we begin the care process, we can talk about how we can track that and how we can see how their nervous system is changing and responding and building their reserves and their adaptability, but also rebalancing, kind of like a teeter-totter, you know, like you said before, because that, that balance point is so critical for these, for everyone, but for, you know, obviously pediatric practice, which is our primary, for us, that's what we talk about a lot. But then, you know, also being able to look at things like the thermal scans and the surface EMGs and for the value of how we can see the, the change that are happening in the day-to-day -day care cycle. You know, and, and I'll just follow up on that. And thank you so much for, for embracing my vision, which was this reserve, you know, understanding what adaptive reserve that, that, that person has. And we know it's very interesting through the early studies that were done by a Nobel Prize winner, whose name was Sperry. He took a look at how, pay, how people, you know, lose that reserve. Like, what is the stress now, it could be emotional, it could be toxic loads from their diet, but you know what really rips the dickens out of their stress reserve? Is gravity. In other words, people live out of balance. And so Sperry, you know, did some, did some work and determined that a high 80% of all consumed energies go to manage our ability to move within gravity or to manage postures. So the EMG that you talk about is really a beautiful way not to measure their back pain or their responses to their muscles, but to look at it and say, how much energy am I, am I wasting from all those habits of poor alignment, poor posture and everything else? And then, I mean, that's a brilliant way to look at, say, how am I getting better from it? And so, you know, we, we have ways in which we can track what the normal is for kids, what the normal is for adults, and we can compare these, these normals, if you would, to where our new patients, where you're doing your doctor's report, are coming in. And again, it gives that window in, that benchmark, for them to have the confidence to know that, you know what, I may not be able to just boost my reserve, but at least I can look at simple things like watching my movements and my postures, allowing my spine to be more flexible and mobile, you're going to get reserve back. And finally, we can take a look at the thermal scans, which were designed specifically to look at the individual nerve roots as they come out at each level of the spine and sort of go, is there an extra stress level there that could be causing a reaction as deep as the glands and organs? So we too, you know, listen, if we could do one scan and get everything we wanted out of it, we would. But we find that these three windows give us as chiropractors this beautiful opportunity to, as I've used before this, this term, benchmark their salutogenic load and then track them forward as you get a chance to move into this. And here's the great news. This thing called chiropractic, as, as, as really interesting as it is, has this almost weirdly miraculous outcome compared to other strategies. You go and look in the literature and there's tons of different people trying to boost the HRV. You know, you can add essential oils, you can meditate, you can do all that. And then you ask them to get adjusted. And here is one of those remarkable things. And yes, I've got my chiropractic hat on, but you know, I was the guy who was, who was doing much of this, this early research that was associated with it. And you adjust somebody's spinal nervous system and there's this bizarre, almost remarkable, what we refer to as arousal process of where it awakens this, this next level of communication, this coherence, as they use the term in physics, this coherent responsiveness that occurs within the nervous system. And by removing that interference pattern, it's like there's almost like a reset button on that person's nervous system. And it shows up in all those three different scans. And, you know, don't get me going here, but when you start to look at, at the application of not one adjustment, but a series of adjustments, you look at something that's called rehabituation, which means that there's a new habit forming where, and this is the greatest thing that we can tell our patients, is that in the same way that they develop these habits of protection, which we call the subluxation, the exact opposite happens while under adjustive care is that it's not about just a simple removal is that each time we adjust and stimulate and arouse this next level communication here's the coolest part scott is that that nervous system and brain 
actually learn to elevate those set points. Lockdown, it actually stays long as they can keep that functioning nervous system coherent. So it actually learns to stay well and stay more powerful. So keeping up with your care isn't about how do I feel today, it's how do I want to be in the future. And that is, and just since, again, we're both neural nerds, that is the concept of something called neuroplasticity, mm -hmm. which is the game of life in every discipline in healthcare these days. Ask your physician, ask your psychologist, ask your sports you know, medicine person, whatever it is, and bring up the term neuroplasticity. Well, first off, if they don't know what it is, you're at the wrong doctor. But at the other side mm -hmm. of it, if they do understand it, they'll go, they'll nod and say, yes, you're on the right path. Yep, I completely agree. And it's, you know, it's interesting is obviously having, you know, now several years of using this. But one of the very first things I recall is, you know, like all of us, right? There's a natural skeptic that lies within every person when you try something new, right? And I remember what was a really profound test that we did is when we were, we were scanning, you know, scanning our staff. And I wanted to see how, how the staff would scan pre and scan post after they got an adjustment yeah. to see what it changed. And so one of the measures that, that, um, that uh, the software provides is a thing called a core score. Correct. And one of my staff had a, a core score that was like a 67 or something like that. It was, it was low. And she was living in just the, the world of stress and she was relatively new within our practice. And so, you know, we wanted to see where she would, you know, where she would be post adjustment. So we got the pre-scan, got her down, gave her an adjustment, she rebounded by 25 points within a few minutes. I mean, it, remarkable. it was, it was remarkable because, you know, it, it was, it was the HRV rebounded significantly, but all of the markers changed. The thermal scans changed, the SEMGs changed, and it was this big profound change on the scans. Now, obviously, you know, it was something that like you talked about with neuroplasticity, for that to become a stable pattern, we had to train our nervous system to do that, which is what ongoing care was. And eventually it got to a point where she was able to maintain it with a lower level of care on her own. But the cool part was, is now we saw that there was this profound immediate response, but then over time we were able to reinforce it and build it so we could rehabituate it like you had mentioned. So yeah, so it, it's, it's cool to watch it firsthand because you can see literally these very profound changes in a person's nervous system, both on the table, subjectively from mom and dad or from themselves. But you can look at it and you can see these changes happening right in front of you. And that's just amazing. Well, you're gonna love, uh, one of the things that we've been spending a tremendous amount of time doing is actually developing different levels of that core score. Mm -hmm. And uh, so now we're we're going into, into final research and final development on a pediatric style core score because there are different firing sequences. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Listen, the beating heart of a child is much different than the beating heart of an adult, just in its, its beats per minute. Yep. So, you know, we have been able to look at, and this is one of the great things about having, having the size of, of data that we collect. We collect, I think I mentioned that, you know, we have 40 different countries. So we're collecting from data around the world. And we have millions of data points that we never used to have because we designed this to be a research engine that associates with gathering data from around the world. So we're a cloud-based format, and it means that, you know, we can look at huge tranches of data and use the most sophisticated uh, levels of artificial intelligence and machine learning now to scrape that data and develop next level best strategies. And, you know, and, and I know that we're, we're, we're sort of, we could talk forever, you and I, yeah. you know, but we want to keep it real for the people who are listening. But I think that when you take a look at, at this user group that is specific to Epic Pediatrics and to the National Wellness Foundation, these are the people that have been providing this data for us, especially so that we could build these pediatric core scores, so that we could build this next level of communication. Look, I don't think that chiropractic has all the answers to every ailment of mankind. In fact, I know it doesn't. And I don't think that that the core score is the most evolved message that we can put out there, but it's darn good. Mm -hmm. And why I'm giving this sort of backstory to it is I do know this, and this is from my years in practice, and I can you know say I've been in practice a number of decades, is that I do know this, is that you will live a longer, healthier, and happier life 
with less functional nervous system stress. That I know for sure. And there isn't a person on the planet who can debate that and not, and, and not acknowledge that. The reality is, is are you getting the job done? You know, um, uh, we see, and this is, this is an acknowledgement for the great medical work that gets done in our You can watch people who have had terrible interferences in whether it be these terrible things. And when medicine is applied in a mo most appropriate way, the balance can occur, but it's chemically induced, you know, in most cases. And there's a right place and a wrong place for that. But I have to share with you that even in those difficult cases, and I've worked with so, so many of them, especially on the ADD, ADHD side, and without going down a, a bunny hole here, I got a chance to work with, with, with the leading, you know, the leading clinician, leading researcher in Boston, Mass. He was the, he was the developer of the entire concept of the ADD world. And, you know, he was enthralled with chiropractic. And as a result of that, we collaborated and we're doing this work using this technology, using the strategies of chiropractic. And, you know, in side conversations and otherwise, he was amazed at what applications we could do, even if they were under a medicated model. And what happened is that as people began to get a more functioning nervous system and their behaviors, and I'm thinking you'd, you'd watch this in your daughter as well, as the behaviors began to reorganize, which is this term of coherence, it depended upon the, the functioning nervous system to keep that up. You didn't need as many medications. And there was this next level of saying, and the goal isn't for us to be antagonistic to medicine, it's to work with them, yep. is to say, wow, wouldn't it be great if we found a new balance that wasn't so toxic, that wasn't so dependent on the medications that were there? And so I don't really see this whole model of, of chiropractic as, as, as being a last resort. I feel that it is a first resort for every parent to have your child checked at birth as a well child check. I see this as an opportunity to grow with chiropractic through the iterations of lifetime chiropractic care, not because you need it, but because you choose it. Amen. Amen. Boy, Dr. Fletcher, I, I thank you so much for you know just dropping all this great information for us because I think moms and dads who are listening here right now, I think that this hopefully has opened up your mind to possibilities of being able to go and have greater ownership of yours and your family's health and a greater understanding of where it really comes from. And I hope that you feel empowered from what you've heard here today. Um, Dr. Fletcher, you know, we have people who are gonna be watching these all over the country and, and all over the world. Um, there's, there's a pretty good likelihood that someone's gonna be curious about getting themselves or their child scanned. If they wanted to find a doctor that utilizes the technology that um, from the from CLA, how would they be able to go and locate one of your doctors? Well, we're, again, I talked about this development, and we have actually in development right now a public based model, uh, which is in development. It'll be there in the next few months of where they'll be able to type in their uh, zip code or country code or whatever it is, and the 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 doctors who use the the technologies that we have will pop up, and they'll have a localization of that. In the meantime, as they're working for it, the National Wellness Foundation is a great clearinghouse for doctors who are there. And I know that there's a way in which they can connect up with that. At the very end of the day, if they really need to find a chiropractor who is using the technologies, they can always reach us at info at insightcla.com. Insight is the, is the name of that technology we develop, and CLA is the name of our company. So info at cla.com is a wonderful way uh, for them to to try and do it. We have a staff on hand who can redirect them if they would put their zip code in, if they're American or their provincial code in, if they're Canadian or their country code in. It'll give us a, a chance to sort of do that until we can automate that process. Wonderful, thank you so much. Moms and dads, if you go to the National Wellness Foundation, you'll have two choices on there. They have chiropractor and pediatric chiropractor based upon what you're searching for. Um, and so if you're looking for a pediatric chiropractor for a child that's got some neurological challenges, those would all be doctors that have the adequate training so that they are able to go and help with, ch with children that are dealing with more complex neurological issues. Um, so moms and dads, thank you so much for being a part of this, uh, this amazing episode today. And uh, Dr. Fletcher, I'm going to drop a seed. Can we get you back on here again? <laughs> Anytime. You know, uh, my mission is to reach out and make a difference for families. And uh, 
And uh, if, as we know, this is reaching out to those. So uh, invite me anytime. All right, wonderful. Thank you so much for your time, Dr. Fletcher. And moms and dads, make sure that you let us know that, that you enjoyed this. Drop some comments down after you've watched it. But also let us know if this generated new questions for you. Because, you know, obviously if we're going to get Dr. Fletcher on here again, we'd like to be able to go and give us some questions that you guys had um, and, and some thoughts that, that were created as a part of this conversation and thoughts you had afterwards. And uh, for those of you who watched today, God bless you guys. Thank you so much for being here and be elite. Thank you for listening to the Growing Healthy Families podcast, the world's number one source for health education. Make sure to go to iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts and give us a review. Make sure to follow us on social media at the links listed in the show notes and let us know what area of health you are struggling with so we can get you and your family on the road to epic health.